So I've never really uh, made a, a post or anything on a story like this, but I've always wanted to share this. At the time that it happened, I did tell my flatmates, but I left out certain details not wanting to seem like a, a weirdo to them. I've had a, a handful of strange experiences throughout my life, but most have been more subtle than what I'm about to share. This happened sometime between 2012 and 2014. I would have been in my late 20s at the time, living in a share house in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. I worked nights packing shelves at a supermarket, a job I absolutely hated, but had kept up all through uni and it got me through. In fact, I had actually graduated in early 2012, but found I was too lazy to just quit. I ended up spending those last few years in the share house kicking around, working this terrible dead-end job, waiting for everyone to go their separate ways so my life could start. After each shift, I, I'd catch the bus home from work at around 11pm, get off at the top of the hill, at the shops, and then walk down the hill towards my home. It was only about a 10 minute walk home from the bus stop, and I only mention all these details because I probably caught that bus and made that same walk a thousand times in all the years that I held that job. But this, this was the only time anything even remotely creepy happened. So, I had hopped off the bus and was headed downhill with the cemetery on my left and a row of simple one and two story homes on my right. I almost never saw any people at this time of night, and that's how quiet the area was. The way is also well lit, and despite a cemetery looming over your shoulder, there's really nothing eerie about it. In fact, it's quite beautiful, really. A well-tended cemetery filled with interesting old markers, statues and things... You'd see people jogging or walking through it most days. The cemetery is bordered by a sandstone wall that follows the way downhill, then left along this coastal road that sort of uh, loops back around almost. Anyway, I was maybe uh, halfway down the hill when a plain white van drove past on my left. At first, I didn't really think anything of it, to be honest. I didn't break pace and the van didn't stop or slow as it went past, I watched the tail lights grow small, sweeping left as it took the band at the bottom of the hill. But as soon as it disappeared, I had this, I don't know, really odd feeling come over me that I was going to see it again. I'm really not sure how else to describe that, but it wasn't like a voice in my head or anything, just an odd fleeting impression that when I get to the bottom of the hill, that the same white van would be waiting for me. So I got to the bottom, turned left, and saw a pair of headlights coming back towards me. They were too far to see if it was the same car, but immediately, I just knew that it was. I didn't feel scared or anything, but I knew that whatever was about to happen was going to happen, whether I wanted it to or not. Again, just a fleeting impression. This time, the van slowed and came to a stop at the side of the road. There was a young driver. I can't remember whether the passenger side window was already open or whether he leaned over to open it, but either way, he leaned across and called to me to come over. All I thought in that moment was that he probably just needs directions. But as I approached, I immediately began to feel very uneasy. That gentle impression that I'd felt earlier, watching the van drive past, now solidified into a, a vague feeling of dread. I felt as if I shouldn't get too close, so I came about as far as the grassy verge and, and stopped. I remember the radio in the car was playing, just some random pop song. He might have reached over and turned it down, I really can't remember, but I also don't remember too much of what he looked like. Except that he was maybe about my age, or maybe a little bit older, had longish blonde hair and a few days growth on his face. He didn't strike me as threatening, so the unease that I felt was more confusing at first, I guess. But he did speak with a British accent, and I just assumed he was a traveler. Excuse me, he said. Can you help me? I'm trying to get to the cemetery. Now, I was really confused. I mean, just over his shoulder on his right, less than like 20 feet away, the tops of grave markers and crypts poked above the sandstone wall. 
Like I said, the way was well lit and he would have definitely seen the cemetery as he drove this road a moment before. In fact, he'd driven down to the far end of it, then made a U-turn. That's when I'd seen him coming back, and so, at the other end, where the road loops around the coast, the wall wasn't high at all, and you could clearly see all the graves, even in the dark, stretching back up to the hill. In other words, it just made no sense. I was about to answer as well, when my blood absolutely ran cold. I froze mid-word, my mouth hanging open, because somewhere in the back of the van, I could clearly hear a woman screaming and crying for help all of a sudden. I could even hear her banging against the inside paneling. I heard it clear as day over the radio playing. I knew it wasn't a recording, but it was also somehow strange and seemed slightly unreal to me. Again, I'm not too sure how to explain it, but I definitely heard it, and it scared the heck out of me, but I didn't react the way that I thought I would, I guess. I looked at him, and he just stared back and said nothing, making no effort to explain the screams or even acknowledge that we were hearing them. But there was no mistaking it. I could still hear it, clearly, as we just stared at each other. Uh, sorry, I have no idea, was all I could get out in the end. He then nodded, said thanks anyway, and drove off. After that, I ran the rest of the way home, which thankfully was only two minutes away. When I got in, I was out of breath and shaking. My flatmates were all asleep, and I went straight to my room. If there had been even 1% of doubt in my mind, like maybe I'd imagined it, I would have probably woken someone first and at least told them what happened. But instead... I called the police. I had to explain the story to two different cops. Long story short, because of a, a jurisdictional thing, my area actually fell under a police station further away than the local one that I'd called. They took it seriously, thankfully, took all my details and said that they'd send a car to look for this van. Unfortunately, I hadn't seen the license plate number. In the moment, I hadn't even thought to check, stupidly, I know. And my description of the driver wasn't much more detailed than what I've described here now, so that really wasn't much help either. Though they had my details, the police, they, they never called back to follow up and nothing showed up in the news or any newspapers. When I told my flatmates about this, I left out the strange feelings of dread and just stuck to the details, I guess. But they mostly thought that I'd been pranked somehow and... Well, I guess that is possible. To this day, I know that that's not what happened at all. It's one of those you-had-to-be-there things, but the whole thing felt so unusual and didn't play out like any kind of prank. The whole event lasted not even three minutes from when he first drove past to when he drove off, and our interaction lasted probably not even 20 seconds, but it has stayed with me for years, and... I often think about it, wondering what happened. Anyway, that's my story. Like I said, I've got a few others, but this one is the most dramatic and I suspect that it's going to stay with me the rest of my life. I'm a 21-year-old female, and this story took place when I was around 11. I remember this day clearly, too, because it was the first time that I was ever allowed to walk to school and back by myself. Up until the age of 14, I lived in what we thought was a safe place. Everybody knew everyone. If you thought that you could get away with something, then you needed to be prepared to have your ear abused by the time that you got home. But there was one day, though... It was a cold winter day and school unfortunately was still open so all the neighborhood kids had to walk through knee high inches of snow just to get to school. It took me longer to leave the house as I was used to walking with my older sister to school since she knew the routes better than me. I always used to make fun of her for being paranoid and taking a different route every day from school but after that day I learned that that was what saved my life in the end. 
As I was waiting by the door to leave, my mum came up to me and told me that I should ride with her to drop me off because my sister was too sick to go today. And being a brat, I made a big deal about walking by myself because I was almost 12 years old and all my friend's parents let them walk alone and all that. She looked at me for a long while and told me to make sure that I pay attention to cars. I got hit by a car and almost died when I was nine, so... The worry that showed on her face was well warranted. I hurriedly nodded though and headed out the door to go to school. My sister didn't like to dilly dally so she was always in a rush to get to school early but seeing as it was just me I thought that it would be a good idea to take my time. I would play in the brown slush that was left on the side of the road and even make funny looking snowballs to see how far I could throw them. Halfway to school I then notice a white van following behind me at some point. Being the playful child that I was, if I had not been bending down to make another snowball, I probably wouldn't have noticed it slowly creeping up the street. I told myself that I was being stupid, but continued more hurriedly to school upon seeing it. Once I got to school, I took a quick glance over my shoulder and saw the van a few feet behind me. It wasn't until I got onto the school grounds that it drove away fast by me, thought that that would be the end of it to be honest but throughout the day when I would stare out the window the van would always be there. I think I assumed that it never really left just parked or something. Many adults would try to convince me years later that maybe it wasn't the same one but I knew that it was. This van had a bright yellow smile emoji sticker on it that you could spot from anywhere I couldn't see who was in the van, but through the tinted glass, I knew that they could see me. It was now the end of the day, and I wasn't ready to go home, but it was too late to call my mum because she was at work and my sister was home sick, like I said. So I had to suck it up and start walking home. I tried to blend in with a group of kids, but most of them were car riders and the others didn't live near me. Remembering what my sister told me, I took another route home. I didn't memorize this route clearly, but I decided anything was better than being spotted by that van. I made it to my main street, but realized my mistake too late. The route that I took led back to the main street where I walked to school, and hidden behind a row of cars was the white van with the same smiley emoji sticker. I tried to stay calm and walk past it, but once I heard the van door silently click open, I ran. I could hear the rush of two pairs of heavy footfalls behind me. They were getting closer, so I did what any normal kid would do. I cut corners. I cut into someone's backyard until I was directly inside of my house and forced myself into the thick snow to make it to the door. My heart was racing, not because I was running, but because I could still hear them behind me. I made it to the door and banged with all my might until someone came to the door. My sister looked confused, but one look at my face and she pulled me inside and locked the doors. The van, it came around and was still outside. Truthfully, it stayed out there as well until finally my brother got home. Me and my sister, well, we didn't talk about it, but we both knew how close it was to me going missing that day. I hadn't thought about this incident in years to be honest but one of my hometown friends showed me an article that came out in 2013. Apparently some men kidnapped and assaulted a girl my age and it wouldn't have scared me if it hadn't have mentioned the white van with that same sticker. Whoever they were they had definitely attempted to kidnap me and do... God knows what else to me that day. This story happened three years ago when I was 15 in my village. I really don't tell this story much too because, well, people tend to think that I'm making it up. But I've been thinking about it quite a lot this week and, I don't know, I just feel like I, I need to tell some people. So my village is located in a pretty rural area that is protected by the government because it's been considered a natural paradise for like the last 30 years. 
This means that exploration in this area is quite difficult nowadays, since it's forbidden to cut down trees, which means that it's a huge forest. I was spending my summer there, and my favorite thing to do was hiking, and although I had never gone alone in the woods, just roads with people, my grandma had told me that cleaning services had opened and rehabilitated a path that had been covered in bushes and trees for like the last 30 years because of a race that was being prepared, like runners and stuff. Usually I would go to the nearest town, one hour away by foot, by the only way that I knew, the road, and on my way back from seeing friends there, I decided to take the new path that my granny said was safe, alone, but that was a pretty big mistake. So the first part of the path was the easiest, with just too many obstacles and landslides, but it was nothing compared to the rest. The second part was a hill full of rocks that was the hardest thing to get up. I literally had to climb on like four legs like a dog. And when I got to the top, I looked around and even found some animal bones as well. I didn't pay much attention to it since the area is known for its big population of wolves and bears that go out at night. I continued my way faster than before. This part was plain floor where the woods really began, so it was a big relief until I got to a sort of dead end. There were some huge trees that had fallen exactly on a row on the path, and it was impossible to cross them. This seemed really off to me as well, because there were no other fallen trees. And the weirdest part? Aside from those trees... There was also a, a little barn there. Yeah, a barn in the middle of the woods. I thought to myself that it was probably abandoned. It looked like it. So I decided to throw my bag into the little field that belonged to the barn and then I crossed the fence. I crossed it running without realizing the most bizarre thing. That the field had no trees in it. It was completely clear. No bushes, no big plants, nothing. It really shouldn't be like that if it was abandoned. I started feeling concerned about how the location of the fallen trees was so coincidental. How there casually was a barn beside with a clear field when the path had been closed for like 30 years. The whole thing just seemed really off. I went on though and luckily I was reaching the last hill my grandma had described the one that connected with the village when suddenly there was complete silence in all the woods which allowed me to hear some branches cracking behind me I thought to myself that it must have been a bird or something but then they came closer and they really sounded like footsteps after trying to convince myself that it was probably just an animal I was so afraid that I couldn't look back. I started walking faster. And guess what? So did the footsteps. I started running after noticing that and so did the footsteps again. I was running for my life at this point when suddenly I started hearing incredibly loud grunts. Everything was going really fast. Luckily, I got to my village in a minute or so after that. I was really close I got onto the patio of the first house that I could find, closed the door. It was a relative's house, no need to call the police. I stayed there for like 10 minutes until I got my breath back. And then I went back home. I really don't know what that was, but I get chills just remembering that place. Not having a signal on my phone in the middle of nowhere and the grunts. It makes me think too that... There was something following me that day since the barn and the trees were just a, a distraction to slow me down. I never went into the woods alone after that and I don't intend to ever again either. This happened in August of 2021. My parents were out for the night. It was just me and my sister home. This was in Manchester, UK. It was around 1 in the morning and I was sat in my kitchen eating food and on my phone. I hear two taps on the window and look up and there was a man in a balaclava waving a knife around. 
It didn't really scare me at first. I think I just started swearing and asking who are you. I, I live in an area where people casually flash knives around. But he didn't say anything and was just sort of scoping out the kitchen like he was looking for something. And he asked how's my sister. Then a few seconds later my front doorbell rings and the man says someone's at the door. I don't know how he heard the doorbell because, I mean, it's hardly noticeable from the kitchen, let alone outside. But that's when I was pretty terrified because my front door was actually unlocked. I quickly grabbed a knife and walked towards the front door. I can see if someone has stood there because there's a glass panel in it. But nobody was there. I quickly locked the door and went back to the kitchen and the man was gone. Instantly I thought about my sister and I ran straight up to her to check on her because it really spooked me out how he asked about her and she was thankfully fast asleep. I shut her window and checked every window and made sure every door was locked. I don't know why but I didn't think to call the police at the time. Instead I just sort of waited up all night and waited for my parents to get back to report it. My mum always shouted and lectured me whenever I left the doors open, even in the day. She's just really paranoid, but I tell you, after that, I triple check every door now. So, I've had encounters with a paranormal stuff, I guess you could call it, in this house, but I've never experienced anything like this. A lot of other stuff has ended thanks to a local priest that we had come over, a good sage of smudging and stuff like that. It's currently 1.47am here where I live, and I got up to go to the bathroom and left the light off. For reference, I haven't gone to sleep yet and I'm not really tired as I'm always up late anyway. But every night when I go to the restroom, I, I just have a tendency to peer through the blinds and look in the backyard to see what's up. I'm just a bit nosy I guess, but... There's nothing ever in the woods, only really the woods themselves behind me for about seven or eight miles. But when I looked out this time, I saw something and I have no idea how to even describe what it was. I'll do my best. It had pale skin, greyish, tall, like really tall, probably at least seven feet. Exaggerated features, the legs were slim and super long arms hung down past the knees kind of sort of hunched over as well i didn't get a super good look at it because it was walking back into the woods when i saw it but this thing was not like any animal i know of here in rhode island our animals are pretty standard looking but its movement was very rubbery like it moved without real motion almost like it was in pain i guess I'm a bit of a skeptic, but man, that was the most terrifying thing that I've ever seen. I guess my only question is, what on earth was it? So, to cut a, an extremely long story short, my friend used to live in a house that was well in the woods. And one day he told me something was happening around his house so I spent the night there to see what was going on. We sat with our backs to the wall and the window cracked just a bit, second story. As we're talking we started hearing strange noises coming from the woods. We were shocked though as we peeked to see what it was because between his house and the woods was this big open area and we could faintly see the open area because of the moonlight but but we couldn't see the pitch blackness of the woods when suddenly some large white creature that looked like a naked man creeped out. It was bald and its eyes were glowing. When we freaked out I yelped a bit too loud because it stopped and went back into the woods. The next day being the curious people that we were we decided to go into the woods and search. Eventually we found a strange uprooted tree with a bunch of holes in the ground. We heard heavy breathing coming from inside somewhere, but we decided not to go looking in there. A few weeks went by and nothing really happened. 
I came back to his house just to sleep over and he asked me to go grab one of the bikes off the back porch. I went back there through the garage but as I was grabbing it, I don't know why but I, I just felt like something was watching me. I looked off toward the woods but saw nothing when suddenly I heard a, a strange noise literally over my head. I looked up at the roof which was only about 7 feet off the ground in that section of the house due to the elevation of the porch and I saw a similar creature sitting on the roof just feet from my face. When I panicked it shrieked in my face and I ran back into the garage and slammed the door shut. My friend ran into the garage from inside the house to see what happened and I was just panicking telling him to lock everything right now. We locked ourselves inside and waited for his dad to come back. Uh, this was around 6 to 8 p.m. I don't remember exactly, but it was closer to the night. His dad was in the military and decided to step out and take a look after he came home, and we told him what happened. And he saw that same creature in the distance, just on the edge of the woods, but had no explanation for it. It's been five years since what happened, and... Now I've been seeing sightings of things just like it all over the place. YouTube, Reddit, Facebook, you name it. It's been really haunting me lately thinking back on that sound that it made when it shrieked and also the, the way the thing just looked. It was terrifying. Its eyes seemed very strange too. I kind of tied two and two and figured that it must live beneath the ground somewhere and only came up when it was dark or something. I don't know. Anyway, the reason why I'm sharing this is because I, I was just wondering if anyone else has witnessed anything like this. If you have, then please do let me know. So, this all started when I was 12 years old. I really don't remember how it came to this, but... One day, me and a couple of my younger friends were walking out from our block of flats and I saw something with the corner of my eye. I still don't know what it was, it was just standing in the corner. It was tall and though I only saw it for a brief second, I experienced literal existential fear and pushed myself and my buddies outside as quickly as possible. Them not understanding what had just happened obviously. We discussed the situation a little, speculated about what was up, but it still wasn't a big thing at that time. We just went on with our day doing, well, whatever kids are usually doing. And it would be fine if it ended with that, but it didn't. You see, after that, three of us started, well, seeing things. Well, maybe two of us, because the other one is a known liar, and I'm not here to tell lies. I know for sure some of you will consider me a liar, but... Anyway, that's up for you to decide. It wasn't anything clear though, but you would just sort of walk home in the evening and suddenly see someone dark and tall standing behind a tree. You knew that something was there and it was watching you, but you would think that maybe your mind is just messing with you sort of thing. But soon enough, it went really surreal. All I can say is that we all became pretty paranoid, I guess, feeling like we were being watched all the time. But naturally, being kids, we also became really curious. And that was the point when we began hunting this stuff. And I'm not kidding. We called ourselves hunters because we would walk all over our area late in the evening, inspecting every dark corner, seeking out the paranormal. I know for sure that most of the experiences were just scared kids, their imagination and stuff. Especially considering the fact that we would bring in someone new who did not experience this stuff previously in order to scare them. This was kind of a bait for whatever haunted us, I guess, because we hoped that it was drawn to fear. But two encounters, they stand out as very real. Stuff like, I saw it standing next to my bed when I woke up at night for a couple of seconds, and it pushed my back when we were on a hunt, but when I turned around, nobody was there. And even it started loudly chanting something on my ear, even though nobody was there, won't be included, although it happened. I can't really remember most of the smaller stuff anyways, but I mean, I'm 20 now and it's been a long time. 
but the first one occurred when I got us two walkie-talkies so we could split onto two teams and inspect the area more efficiently, I guess. This time, however, we were hanging out in the yard and playing with only one of them. The other one was right there with us, turned off. And that's when someone else appeared on our usual frequency. We heard, I guess, strange noises is the best way to describe it. And I started repeatedly asking who was this third person on the line. For some time, it was just dead silent. But then someone finally said, they're calling for you nothing more and then silence this was pretty scary on its own because the strange thing is in five minutes all three of us were called home almost simultaneously me and one of the guys got a call from our parents the other one was approached by his father directly and that's when we got paranoid over one more thing maybe our parents are under the influence of what we thought to be a demon as well I know that we were probably overthinking it. We were kids, right? And it was just a coincidence, but... I mean, it was weird. But I guess when you're scared, you can't really think straight, right? But the second one was worse, to say the least. This time, there were two of us. And I swear that I would think that I was hallucinating if I wasn't on my own, but... We were heading to our usual place of hunting, a dark street between a block of flats. Please bear in mind that I'm from the Ukraine, and it's not some fancy building, but like a Soviet nine-story panel one, wildly overgrown with trees and all that. And on the other side is a sort of semi-abandoned factory. It's not clear if it is in use or not, but once in an eternity we could see its pipes steaming, though everything around it is covered in metal scrap and trash. Anyway... Our casual talk was interrupted when I suddenly stopped to stare into the bushes. My friend joined me and now we both stared at something that we couldn't exactly understand. It was something white, just sort of floating at around three meters high. Not see-through like a ghost, but like solid white. And when I think back about it, it almost seemed like we were hypnotized, I guess, because I don't remember any thoughts coming through my head. I wasn't trying to process what I saw, I guess. Just sort of looking at it. And then, it frowned. Now, I know that that sounds weird. I don't even know how to describe exactly how it frowned while having no distinct features. But it felt like its skin, if you could call it that, wrinkled in a way to express anger. It took us a couple more seconds of stupor before I woke up from it, I guess you could say, punched my friend in the shoulder, and we ran somewhere people could see us as quickly as we could. Nobody was around though, so the best option was to stay somewhere someone would possibly notice us from a window. I was quietly, sort of hysterically laughing from all of the adrenaline, I think. It felt like I finally saw something unimaginable, and we almost just died at the same time. Thinking about it now, though, this thing would probably end us if it could or wanted, I guess. And I know that it sounds unbelievable, but yeah, we went back. Yeah, yeah, I know. Nobody would do that, right? That's bull. Yeah, all that stuff. But I was just curious if it had a body. Here's the thing, though. It was so dark that I couldn't even distinguish anything below its supposed head. So, we grabbed some rocks and sticks and we went back. And believe it or not, it was still there. Though a little bit closer to the path that we were standing on this time. It wasn't moving, just like us for a moment, because it was terrifying. Truly, we didn't know what we were dealing with. We were just impulsive, stupid kids. But, we still threw whatever we grabbed at this thing, barely reaching the bushes at all. And it reacted by stretching its neck, skin, or whatever it was, tightening on its tendons, or whatever they were called. And at this point, our fright reached its peak, and we finally ran away. Now, this demonical nonsense went on for some time, a couple of years, I would guess, but at some point, and I have no idea why... 
everything just sort of ended. I don't know how, I, I don't know exactly when, I don't know why. Maybe because we got older or something and we weren't as sensitive to the paranormal stuff or because we were getting more and more brave, bringing kitchen knives now and crosses and all that stuff to try and protect ourselves. But maybe this thing just got bored of us and moved on or something. Like I said, I don't know, but I know that I saw it. That much I'm sure of. And maybe almost everything that we thought happened was just our imagination. But those two instances, they were definitely real. Quite honestly too, I would die to know what that thing was and what it wanted from us. It made a couple of years of my life feel like an absolute mess. And it would be nice to sort of, I don't know, sort these memories out. To understand what the heck we were dealing with. Because sometimes it seems like I'm just an idiot who can't get over the games that we played as a kid and... With nobody to consult with, I think I just guess to prefer not to mention this part of my life to anyone because I know how crazy it sounds. Sometimes I, I hope to see this tall thing again, just so that I could know that what I saw was real. This takes place in southeast Texas, within a hundred miles of Houston. I was in college, but had moved back to my parents for a semester, after some, uh, some roommate drama. My parents lived out in the country though, miles outside of town with some acreage. The land in the back of the house consists of four zones really. You've got the backyard with the nice St. Augustine. The backpack, which is the section of the woods that my parents cleared of underbrush and kept fairly maintained the back 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 which is a sort of clearing that we use to go back and do bonfires and parties in high school and then there's the woods after high school my parents kind of gave up on keeping back the brush and weeds from anything except their nice backyard section so imagine a big backyard fenced by a wall of tall weeds and large trees that goes back a while and then a field of giant weeds transitioning into solid dense woods with oak, pine and other trees and all that. Uh, I should also mention that I had this dog that my parents let me keep outside. They had a big chain link dog run that she lived in since my parents had no parameter fencing besides some barbed wire at the very back of the property. And this dog was not the type to stay in one spot. In fact, she was aggressive to other dogs too, always going after them, acting tough, and I sometimes worried that she'd get out and kill the neighbor's chickens or something. She was about 60 pounds and not a jumpy or scared dog at all. Now, since I was in college, I had no curfew or anything and would always come home late at night, early morning, after hanging out with friends or studying or whatnot. On this particular night, it was pretty cold out. 50 is cold here. Can't tell me different either. And even though she had a house and had a bed and straw out there, I felt bad for my dog, so I decided to bring her in to sleep in the garage. I should have been more careful because this happened quite a bit, but somehow this dog just always got the better of me. She would wait in the back until the gate was unlocked and I was in the run, gate closed with unlocked horseshoe latch, run around me and pop the gate latch with her nose and bolt off. So of course, she did this and me being who I was, was left standing in the run in the cold in the middle of the night. I was angry too because I knew that I had to go and find her and bring her back at this point. The moon was pretty bright that night and I had seen her fly into the weed wall and disappear so I followed her in without a light, called her name and there were some little trails through the weeds that we tried to keep open so we could access the property but these were less wide than a person can walk and the weeds were about maybe a head taller than me so it was pretty dense. Anyway, I'd gone a ways and had passed through the wooded section out into the clearing, solid weeds, five or eight feet tall. And I get quiet listening trying to hear sounds of where she might have been at. When I hear intermittent rustling out towards the woods, which at this point uh, just a, a real dark outline at the edge of the weed jungle. The rustling wasn't the sound I expected since she usually just crushed through the woods and in my head I'm thinking, what the heck is she doing now? 
honestly thought that she was probably rolling around in some dead skunk or something, and I was going to have to bathe her. Figuring, though, that it was just my wild dog again, I made my way toward the noise, calling out her name again. As I got closer, it became apparent, though, that the rustling was not the sound of an animal charging through underbrush, but more like something intentionally shaking the trees. Like if you would grab a branch and shake it, and all the connected trees and vines would shake too. I was close enough now to make out individual branches silhouetted at the top of the tree line, and I could see that whatever was going on was causing the trees to shake all the way up to the top as well. This was off, and decidedly not my dog prancing around. I shut up and froze. Now, I hear in all of these stories people talking about how when they notice the woods go silent, and I can't remember if this happened or not, but as I stood there, I clearly heard two or three loud, deep huffs. And I guess it, it kind of sounded like a bull, but maybe with a deeper fluttering to it. Not like the tonal sounds a cow makes, but the deep, heavy exhale when they're defensive. And seemed to come from around my head height, I guess. For some reason, my mind registered that this thing was a lot closer to me than the tree line. I also remember the distinct feeling that this noise, it was directed at me. It was at this point too that I got this terrible feeling in my gut, like whole body fear and I panicked. Rational or not, I yelled my dog's name with all fear and urgency. You know how your voice gets higher and louder at the end? Well, I did that and turned and I just ran as hard as I could. Either my dog heard my tone and got scared or she was scared of whatever was on that tree line because as I crashed through the weeds, she came up on my left from a creek and flew past me like a bullet. When I got to the open garage, she was trying to get into the back door to the house, jumping on it like a crazy animal, which was really unlike her. I closed the garage but put her in the kennel and after that, I went to bed. Now, I don't know what it was and at the time I think I convinced myself that it was one of those hogzillas that you hear about on the news from time to time. I've been around plenty of cattle and I've never heard one make a noise quite like this one. Not saying that it couldn't have been, but something just didn't feel right. This was like 10 years ago, but... I know for sure that I'm still going to think real hard about it, even if I never have to go back out there alone at night again. So this happened when I was maybe 13 or 14. I want to believe that this was just a dream, but something inside of me says that it happened. So... Now, I'm from uh, eastern Slovakia, in a city that isn't necessarily very religious, but has a lot of stories about demons and unholy things, I guess. We have one specific legend about a demon that mirrors whoever is looking at it, but I never really believed in any of this stuff. We lived in a small Slavic house, and I shared a room with my brother and two sisters. One night I was in bed and having trouble sleeping, just sort of lying there wide awake, and after what seemed like a couple of hours, I decided to go to the bathroom. But we didn't have a bathroom inside, so you had to go out the front door and around the house to go to the outhouse. I get up and step over my brother to leave my room and go out the front door. I grab my glasses on the way out so I can see clearly outside, so I know I wasn't just mistaking things for my bad vision. And as soon as I step outside, I turn to the left to go around the house, and suddenly I'm face to face with, well, myself. Maybe two meters in front of me. It's clearly me as well. Same face, same age, same glasses. Wearing different clothes than the ones that I was wearing, but still clothes that I owned. And we stared at each other, both wide-eyed and in shock, neither of us moving. After maybe five full seconds, I would guess, he just turned around and casually walks around the corner of the house. I'm frozen in place. I know that I'm not dreaming. And after a minute or two, I slowly walk around the corner. 
and there was nobody there. Just the outhouse, maybe 50 meters away. I go to it and I pee real fast and go back inside and get in bed. I lay awake confused and rethinking what just happened. But eventually I, I fall asleep. I don't know how long it was too, but I woke up at some point, uh, somebody yelling. I sit up startled, and my brother, eight or nine years old at the time, comes running back in the room yelling all types of expletives at me. He's freaking out, pacing back and forth in our room. Me and my now awake sisters try to calm him down and ask what happened, but he looks like he's having a psychotic breakdown. After a few minutes, we get him to calm down and talk to us about what happened. He says that he went outside to use the bathroom and as soon as he got out the door, he came face to face with himself. And he told the exact same story as what I had experienced. My sisters tell him that he's just tired and seeing things. It was just a bad dream. I never said anything to him. He said that he didn't want to go pee anymore and he just got into bed. We all went back to sleep at this point, and to be honest, I, I never told anyone about my experience, ever. In fact, I hadn't even thought about it until this day. It's been over a decade, and I'm living in Salt Lake City now. I woke up this morning next to my girlfriend, who's still asleep, and I go about my morning, set up and put up my contacts, I brush my teeth, do normal stuff. I decided to go to the gym before my girlfriend wakes up, so... I get ready and leave my house. I go down the stairs and out to the parking lot. But as soon as I turn to the left to go towards my car, there I am again. But this time, I'm not face to face. The other me is maybe 100 meters away behind a car. I start walking towards him, never taking my eyes off of him. We are sort of staring at each other again. I get to maybe 40 meters away and I can clearly tell that it's myself. And what makes me more certain is that he's wearing a green jacket that I had in the passenger seat of my car. It's not easy to mistake and at about 20 meters away, he turns and walks behind the cars. I lose sight of him for just a brief second. I get to my car and look in the window and my jacket is no longer on my seat. I look around but there's nobody there. I am so freaked out by this point that I just go back to my apartment and I get back in bed. I know that I'm not dreaming because I'm clearly wide awake at this point. But what I don't know is that if this is real or maybe I'm just having some sort of a, a weird hallucination. So... The creepiest thing just happened to me. I, a 24-year-old female, am laying in bed scrolling through TikTok after a long day of work. As I was scrolling, I noticed breakthrough sounds that were not part of the original audio. I confirmed this by scrolling away and scrolling back to the videos and realizing the sound wasn't there anymore. It started as little sort of blips that I assume were just caused by our terrible download speeds. As I kept scrolling though, I started hearing more and more until one entire video's audio was completely covered by what sounded like listening to TV over the phone. I got creeped out and paused the video, but the sound continued. I could hear someone breathing and eating what sounded like potato chips through my phone. I immediately covered my phone, the TV and the eating sound stopped at that point. And I was left with that sort of static that you can hear when somebody is silently on the other side of the phone. When I uncovered my camera, the chips quietly returned. I covered my camera again and, after sitting in two full minutes of phone static, asked hello. There was a, a short, low sound that I assumed to be a grunt and the phone static suddenly ended. I panicked, closed all my apps and turned off my phone. Now I have tape covering my camera and I just bought a VPN. I know that it's virtually impossible for the iPhone camera to be hacked, but still, I'm freaked out and I have no idea what's going on. My roommate just got home from dinner and told me that she's heard the same sounds before and 
but we're both pretty sure that it's probably a weird Bluetooth thing with our or somebody else's headsets because we live around a lot of people who work from home. We're changing all of our passwords though and keeping our front cameras covered just in case because, to be honest, I'm still not sure who the heck that was or how on earth they were listening through. So this experience took place about maybe 10 years ago now. It was while I was babysitting my baby cousin at my grandmother's house. Just to quickly explain the layout to a house as well, it has multiple levels. The main level with the kitchen, living room, two bedrooms, and a bathroom has two sets of stairs. One goes up to the master bed or bath. The other goes down to the den or laundry in a sunroom. From the den, there's another set of stairs that goes to the finished basement. This experience took place on the main level in the living room, I had the baby on my lap just sort of playing, there was nobody else there and out of nowhere there was suddenly a crying coming over the monitor and I could also hear the crying throughout the house, coming from my grandmother's bedroom upstairs which is where her crib and the other monitor were. I immediately carried the baby and myself straight outside going right past the stairs to the upstairs bedroom to the set going down to the den and out the sunroom door hearing the cries the whole time. We stayed outside until my grandmother got home. I have no explanation and it has baffled me all these years as to what happened that day. Had I only heard it from the monitor I'd say possibly interference from another monitor close by but... I distinctly heard it so clearly from upstairs and it carried and was even louder as I passed by it to get outside. I am still troubled by that day. So I've always had incredibly weird paranormal experiences throughout my life but this one definitely tops the charts. It unnerves me even to this day. I moved to Texas, but I had to fly to Utah to pick up my car. It's February of 2020, and I leave Utah at approximately 6 p.m. with a friend who flew with me. We decided that we'd spend the night in Albuquerque so we could get some sleep, and we'd arrive there at around 4 a.m. So we're driving, things are fine. And you have to pass through a reservation to get to the main highway for Albuquerque and something felt just off from the second that we entered into New Mexico. It's maybe two or three in the morning at this point and my friend was fast asleep with her head against the window while I played the music loudly. We had to drive slowly as the speed limit was only like 35 or 45 here and as we got further into the reservation I heard a, a sharp knock on the roof of my car. It was hard enough to be clearly heard over the music. My friend was even startled awake and asked what happened. I shrugged it off. I didn't want to stop. This might have been intuition as well, but I'd rather have rock damage or drive on a flat tire or anything else than stop on that road. It was dark and something just felt wrong. Now, I had really absurdly bright LED headlights on my car, and as such, I could see a few miles ahead of where my car was going. My friend was watching the road, and I slowed down to get a better look while I was still a good distance away. But what I saw, it still freaks me out to this day. The best way that I could describe it was a, a body of a human, sort of half contorted downward, the hair and the head were upside down and its arms were like large stalactite looking things. But that thing was so dark as well that my headlights couldn't even penetrate it. However, it illuminated everything around it. Its face wasn't looking at us originally, but it sort of twisted its head to look around at us. It didn't have facial features, but it looked sort of distorted like it had broken a jaw or something and... It was almost, I don't know, sort of blurry, I guess. I pride myself on my somewhat photographic memory, but it was like it didn't even want me to see it. At this point, we're no more than 50 to 75 feet away, and I just step on it. My friend asks if I saw that, and I nodded my head. 
I didn't even want to talk about it, if I'm being honest. I, I didn't even want to breathe. I was just shaking so badly because it felt ominous. Evil, in fact. I can't even put my finger on it to explain in full detail the fear that I felt, but it was like it penetrated to my bones. It was a primal instinct to run and run as fast as I could away from whatever this thing was. I told her not to look back because we don't want it to follow us. And I swear that I drove a solid 120 until I got off the reservation. We didn't end up stopping in Albuquerque either. I just drove all the way to Lubbock instead and we spent the night there. My work asked for paranormal stories and I told this once. A co-worker mentioned putting it on here because she thinks that you guys might like it. Anyway, that's it for my story and I guess I just want to add as well that I reached out to my friend and it turns out that they were awake that entire time. They just had their head resting against the window so it wasn't like we were mistaken with regarding what we saw. So I'm 16 years old and I live in Italy. My house is in a little village on the biggest mountain in Europe and there isn't much activity around here during the day. A very small amount of cars pass by. There usually is really no people around though. It's a very calm and cool place at the end. This event though, it took place last April. I had just gotten out of school after a two hour long Latin test and I was basically already sleeping at that point. I unlocked my bike, waved at my friends, and I left, taking the main road that led to the village that I live in. As always, there were no cars, no people, no nothing. I was tired, like I said, and while riding, I was thinking about the usual things a 15-year-old is thinking about when coming back from school. The should I do the homework first or video games kind of stuff. I was probably overthinking and kept going along the road without realizing that I didn't take the right hand turn. I noticed my mistake maybe a few minutes later and thought, oh well, never mind, I'll just take the long way home. But because at the end of the road, you could sort of take a path that led to the village anyway. And while I didn't know yet, this was probably the worst mistake that I've made in my entire life. I kept going and at that point the road was sort of winding through a little forest. All the trees above me had stopped the already small amount of light that was there, so it was basically dark at this point. I turned on the bike's flashlight and moved on to the right side of the road. Everything was quiet until I heard a, a car sound coming towards me. I was a bit surprised because, as I already said, there was basically no car activity in the area, especially at this time of day. I didn't panic, I mean, after all, it was just a car passing by. After a while, I saw the headlights approaching from the road. The car was still pretty far away and was going at a slow pace, almost as if the driver was looking for something. Then the car sped up and, to my surprise, turned right to get in front of me. Confused and not wanting to get hit by a vehicle, I turned left to bring the bike on the other side of the road. But then the car did the same thing and sped up even more. I had very little time now to realize what was happening because the car was coming at full speed towards me and I was about to be hit. So I did the first thing that came to my mind and I jumped off the bike on the right side of the road. I did it just in time as well because the car ran over the empty bike just a few seconds after I jumped. I sat on the asphalt, my knees and elbows burning now from the fall, trying to comprehend what had just happened. When I saw the driver of the car getting out of the vehicle, the guy was now on the side of the road, running towards me, not saying a word. I got up as fast as I could, but the guy managed to grab my left arm. I screamed, turned around, landed the strongest punch that I could possibly take on this guy's nose. The guy didn't flinch though. I let go of my arm, touched his now bleeding nose, and just smiled at me. For simply running back into the car, starting the engine again, and leaving. I stood there in complete shock. I grabbed what was left of my bike, and I just ran home as fast as I could. 
I was so scared and confused that I even left my backpack in the middle of the road that day and had to go back the next day to get it. And as crazy as that whole 30 seconds or so was, that was it. I never figured out who this guy was, why he tried to run me over with his car like that, or anything. This is by far the most terrifying and most close to death in my life that I've ever been to, and I can tell you that I never did take that road again.